forum meeting um, for March. We welcome you all here today um, and I would like to um, introduce um, Dr. Nassim Nakfi, who is the president of the BBA and he will be speaking to us a little bit later on about the BBA ecosystem updates, um, welcoming some of our new members, uh, sharing some updates on the Blockchain All Party Parliamentary Group, talking about the Center of Excellence for British Blockchain and also the Blockchain Associations Forum, as well as the JBBA, which is the Journal for British Blockchain Association, which is a globally published academic and insightful peer-reviewed paper publication. Um, we will also be talking a little bit about the Student Forum, fellowships, memberships, and the uh, National Blockchain Roadmap. Also, we'll be welcoming um, some uh, kind of Dr. Stylianos Ampakis today. Um, he'll be talking through uh, the flat, flat coins and stable coins regulation updates. And yeah, so we welcome you all here today and I'll hand you over to Dr. Nassim Nakfi. Thank you very much. Thanks, Deborah. Can uh, everybody hear me? Can you all hear me? Just say yes in the chat box. Okay. Dr. Uh, Kampakis, are you here? Is that you, Estelle? Can you hear us? Just say a few words. Hello. Can you hear Hello. me? Hi, we can hear you, Dr. Kumbak. Please go ahead. Ah, okay, sure. Yeah, the first time in the metaverse of the British Blockchain Association, and I couldn't see any of the controls. So it's like, uh, I don't know what happened. Um, we can hear you nice, loud, and clear. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hi, Vern. Um, very happy to be here. Um, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we're going to talk about uh, stable coins and more specifically uh, the evolution of that concept called um, flat coins. Um, first of all, I'm not sure if others can speak, uh, but I was just curious to hear whether uh, other people in this room have also heard of the concept of uh, flat coins. I think it's a it's a relatively new term. Uh, I don't think many people have heard about that. Yes, that, that, that is correct. Mm. Uh, so it's it's a fairly new concept. That, to be honest with you, it's something which um, th this is a bit of a funny side note is that I started doing research in that area uh, about a year and a half ago uh, before I learned that this concept actually had a name <laughs> so i became aware of that uh, through um, a business partner of mine who was like oh that thing you, you described to me like six months ago apparently it does have a name I'm like all right um and to give a brief overview of the idea uh, since uh, everything that's been going on in the last couple of years with interest rates rising inflation being a, a very big problem um there's been um, some discussions in the Web3 and the blockchain community around how, uh, how we could create an asset which can act as an inflation hedge. And the idea behind the flat coin is that uh, instead of trying to uh, create an asset that is pegged against something like the US dollar or the price of gold or similar, uh, instead of that, uh, you create a digital asset which is trying to track inflation but this is i guess the original version of the idea yeah right uh, because i believe that flight cons as a concept they are a more generic this concept describes a more let's say general um, class of assets compared to stable coins in the sense that if we had to come down to the core definition Whereas a stable coin is focused on maintaining a hard peg against an asset like the US dollar, uh, a flat coin essentially tries to maintain some kind of uh, of soft peg, right? So because saying that you know you can track inflation, you can track some other index, you can track a weighted combination of inflation and something else, um, it's essentially a form of of what I call a soft peg, right? And there are a few different. Uh, 
ways in which such an asset could be created. So, so something which I find fascinating is that uh, because this space is so new, there is no de facto standard as to how this could be achieved. And I'd say there are multiple competing ideas. Um, for example, personally, I'm working on a flat coin concept called Janus, which is focused on a two token economy, hence the name Janus. Janus was the two-faced god of uh, ancient Rome. <laughs> Um, but there have been some other protocols, like uh, one which I believe is called Reflexor, another one called Neon. Uh, Frax has also released um, their own flat coin, um, all taking like different approaches to, to the same problem, right? So at, at the most fundamental level, I guess the, the, the simplest type of flat coin is one that tracks inflation and is simply uh, and the price is stabilized uh, in a traditional sort of way through over collateralization. I mean, I believe some of the motivations behind uh, flat coins is to also create a new class of assets which is uh, native to Web3, right? So this is essentially what fascinated me about this area in uh, the very beginning, because I looked, for example, at things like Tether as well as DAI, and I realized um, there is some kind of stable coin trilemma, as I like to call it. And it's something which um, I had been studying for a while, and I realized that Athena, which is now a very popular new, let's say, project in this area, in the space of stable coins and flat coins, um, we're also talking about this trilemma as well, which, which clearly indicates that other uh, people, other researchers, other practitioners have also identified this issue, which essentially where this trilemma is that we have some stable coins which, in theory, are relatively secure, like Tether, but they're extremely centralized. Uh, so we're in the blockchain space, in the Web3 space, uh, the ethos is decentralization, so we cannot just accept that, <laughs> right? We cannot just accept a centralized solution. Then we have some other um, uh, projects like DAI, which are, in theory, decentralized, but they are very inefficient because of their over-collateralization. And then you have some stable coins like Terra Luna, which obviously collapsed. So it was decentralized in a way, it was efficient because it was getting collateralized primarily through its own collateral, but it crashed, right? And essentially flat coins uh, allow the use of blockchain technology in order to beat this trilemma in a sense. Um, and obviously there are different trade-offs there. So like my personal opinion on the design I've been working on is to create a protocol which is decentralized at the same time efficient. Um, but what we're sacrificing is the finality of transactions at t equals zero. So what this means is that we have a very safe and secure protocol. Uh, it's soft pegged against deflation. That's at least the design. We're still in the conceptual and research stage, right? And ideas are, are always more than welcome. But uh, I guess the caveat is that the protocol does not guarantee that the price uh, is going to, the price of the asset is going to be at a certain level in US dollar terms at a certain point in time. So we can say that the price is going to be roughly within this range over the next three days, but we cannot say, hey, you know, the price is going to be X, in a, in a, which is what the stable coin necessarily is guaranteeing. And obviously the, uh, this is a problem for real-time payments, but it's not so much of a problem for cases, situations like, let's say, business transactions, right, or invoice financing, yeah? Uh, and also the benefit there is that you have something which is way safer. Why? Because when Terra Luna lost the, its peg, um, then it very quickly collapsed because of the loss of faith in the protocol. But with flat coins, the problem is not as serious because if the flat coin loses its peg, well, it's a soft peg to begin with. So it's not guaranteed. So there is more time to maneuver and try to fix it. And I think this is a really interesting concept. And what fascinates me about this is that this cannot exist in traditional finance, right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's not difficult to make this work on a blockchain, but it would be impossible to make this kind of thing work in traditional finance. And I do think that the community um, should definitely invest more time into researching flat coins because we're talking about um, a unique blockchain-based technology that could dominate a very large percentage of the global payments market and payments infrastructure. 
Um, and yeah, maybe I should take a pause here and see whether there are any questions because I think I've been talking nonstop for 10 minutes and <laughs> I'm afraid whether without any slides or anything, this might get a bit overwhelming. <laughs> uh, thanks, uh, <clears throat> thanks, Talinos. Yeah, I think the, the, the two questions are, um, you mentioned about blockchain um, used for, um, for flat coins. So compared to other traditional stable coins, um, how is this uh, going to be different for um, for this new blockchain based um, stablecoin? And also, you mentioned tracking inflation. Um, mm -hmm. Is it going to be real time, or how is it going to track? Um, and obviously, it's going to be country and region is, uh, is specific, isn't it? Not not like in the context of global market. Uh, yeah, these are excellent questions. Um... So uh, let me, uh, so re regarding, first of all, uh, whether it's country specific or not, um, as well as tracking inflation. So I think in terms of tracking inflation, it, it probably cannot be um, real time in the sense that um, inflation cannot be really tracked real time, right? So the, you, you do need to uh, measure the prices of consumer goods. Uh, there's a very popular protocol now, or product may I call it, called Truflation. Uh, which is essentially a blockchain oracle for inflation. And I think they are also capitalizing on the current trend around flat coins. Um, so it's not it's not real time, but that's to say it doesn't mean that we're trafficking with a lag of one year or so. I, I would expect there would be a lag of maybe a few weeks in terms of inflation. Um, that also being said, I'm not sure if flat coins have to be country specific. Uh, the thing is that, and, and, I mean, I guess this is a bit of a can of worms in the sense that if you're talking about country-specific stable coins and flat coins, um, you also have to take into account how you could use blockchain in order to provide a solution to currency exchange. Uh, and because now we're talking about a situation where you have different uh, sovereign nations or like the European Union with their own currency and then you create a flat coin and obviously you need to be able to ramp on and off all, all those currencies or exchange them with one another. I guess that's a related but slightly different type of problem. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I was recently talking with a project that is trying to do something like this for the African continent uh, because currency exchange is a big problem there. Uh, and uh, it looks like flat coins could actually help a bit with that because uh, especially in, in situations where a country doesn't have a strong established currency and can face pressures uh, as in high, very high volatility of the FX rate between different currencies or low liquidity um, and, and problems like that, um, then or even very high inflation as it is happening in Egypt right now, flat coins could potentially provide the solution. Uh, especially this type of design I mentioned earlier with Janus, where it's based upon a soft peg, which means that the protocol is trying to reach a certain price point, but it's given a certain time to do this, right? So there is some flexibility to achieve a certain goal, and then governance and incentives try to push towards that goal. Um, so that's one. Uh, and then, sir, what was the first question again? <laughs> yeah, the first question was the, the use of blockchain you mentioned. So compared to other traditional stable coins, USDC, et cetera. Is it going to be a different type of blockchain or different consensus mechanism and things like that? Um, I wouldn't expect there's going to be a different type of blockchain. I would expect there would be different types of incentives, right? So something which I think we realized from, I mean, at least I've realized throughout my research in stable coins, is that if you want a truly decentralized, innovative, Web3 native stable coin, you have to think beyond the terms of a uh, over collateralization uh, because it, it just won't cut it, right? So if you want to create a centralized solution, then yeah, over collateralization is perfect. But if you're going to create something which is efficient, uh, it creates positive externalities in terms of yield, etc., cetera, uh, then you have to think beyond that. So I don't think that in terms of blockchain, we need something radically different. I'm pretty sure that any uh, one of the, or a, 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 any big layer one, uh, could be used now to create a flat coin. Um, obviously, you know there are issues such as the gas fees and things like that that you know we, we have to uh, we have to, to, to consider. 
but it's more of a case of we need innovations in in this area in terms of tokenomics and incentives mechanisms and stabilization mechanisms in order to to make this this work and i believe some of them are really web3 native uh, primarily governance right so for example uh, if let's say a flat coin is meant to try and hit a certain peg or certain level of stability how can you ensure that um you know how, how can you ensure that it's actually going to achieve this well through uh, governance is one such mechanism right and, and i think this really gets us back to some of the fundamentals of blockchain and um, and web3 and this is one of the things that fascinates me a lot about the concept not just saying oh we're going to create an inflation beating uh, asset because to be honest with you some of those designs i don't think they can last for long because uh, you still need in order to beat to do something that bits inflation you still need to produce some economic value right so in order to produce some economic value we have to see beyond the simple bull uh, bull run and bear markets the boom and bust cycles that cryptocurrencies are going through and think how you can actually create real sustainable value in economic terms and i think also this is some uh, use cases like the ones we discussed earlier responding to your very interesting question are relevant things like uh, forex exchange especially in developing and emerging markets. Thank you. I think we have um, there's one question from Mr. Bond. Any any UK institutions researching flat coins? Um, now that I'm aware of, I'd say, you know, since I'm a member of the British Blockchain Association and I'm actively researching flat coins and working on a flat coin, you could say that <laughs> by definition the BBA is doing so. Um, but uh, that's that's all I know as far as I'm concerned. But if everyone wants to collaborate, I'm definitely interested. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Stalinos. Any final comments um, on on your topic? Uh, none. Uh, I think it's a very fascinating topic. I believe it can be one of the narratives that's going to dominate uh, the, this, this bull run, the coming bull run. And yeah, if anyone wants to drop me an email, I'll be more than happy to, to collaborate. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe in the future we should even host a workshop or similar through the, through the BBA or maybe in an opinion article on, on the journal. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, you know, it was a very, it's the first time I accessed the metaverse, and I think it's a pretty cool experience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, um, Thank you. Uh, Thank you.